Buongiorno! I'm here in Tuscany for the Bike Connection, which is a mini trade show of sorts where cycling editors meet with brands, we get the skinny on the latest products and then get to test ride them. I've certainly been enjoying riding road and gravel bikes on beautiful paved roads. Up, uh, we're just here outside uh, Massa Maritima, road in Old Town there. Been riding along these Italian cypress lined gravel roads and then there's about 100k of mountain bike trails here which was testing if not the limits of the bike the limits of its rider. In this video I want to talk about some of the products I've been testing including this YT Scepter, the latest Northwave Rocket Plus shoes and a to me kind of crazy saddle from the German brand SQ Lab. Please take a second to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss any of my independent reviews and feature videos. Now sit back and enjoy the ride in Tuscany. One of the best things about riding, as you know, is a sense of place, whether that's exploring new places, new to you places, or getting even more familiar with places you already know and love. Massa Maritima is about two hours north of Rome, not too far from Siena, which you may have been staring at longingly uh, with the recent finish of Strada Bianchi. But the riding here is fantastic. It was a great place to uh, reacquaint myself with the YT Scepter, which I first rode for a number of days in Southern California when the bike launched a few months ago. It's a funky bike, no doubt. Uh, I went into it with a bit of a negative attitude and came away pretty impressed and have been enjoying riding it here also. Uh, but first, let's talk about some of the other bits, the shoes. Northwave has a few different gravel models. Everybody's got a gravel thing, if not a bunch of things these days, right? And some are uh, you know, legit things made for the purpose and some are existing products that companies are just slapping the name gravel on because gravel is so hot right now. These shoes, to my taste, look like, kind of like skate shoes I used to wear <laughs> back in the day. Um, they feel quite different than skate shoes. They are quite walkable uh, in that while the pedal platform is quite stiff, you know, from here to here is stiff. The toe is flexy, and then even the heel has got a good amount of give to them. You've got a Vibram outsole and then an EVA midsole uh, to, for a little bit more cushioning. Uh, EVA, of course, being lighter than rubber, so they're not, they look chunky, but they don't feel chunky on the foot. Uh, they're not quite as firm in the upper, or they're nowhere near as firm in the upper, what am I saying, as like a, cross-country racing shoe. But once on the bike, I didn't feel like I was missing anything as far as pedaling efficiency. The things, again, the aesthetic for a guy who's been wearing stretchy pants for a long time uh, is a notable departure than a racier shoe. Northway also has the Rockster, which is a more you know straight ahead racing shoe. It's a lace-up shoe. I've had those sitting in my closet for a few months now. <laughs> I have not yet even put cleats on them because I don't really like lace laces. Uh, in my casual day-to-day -day shoes, I wear Blundstones and Birkenstocks, neither of which have laces, and I just don't like the things uh, in general. And for cycling, I am not a fan. The Rocket Plus does not have laces. The regular Rocket has laces. This has, you know, the wire and dial. Looks like a boa. It's not a boa. It is Northwave's own SLW3 dial. Works three ways. Clockwise tightens it. You press a little lever that micro steps it out, which is nice. Or you pull the lever up and then the thing releases. The tongues kind of flopped over to the side after a couple hours of riding, not a big deal, but there's nothing to really keep them in place aside from just the friction of the lace. I also found that the lace felt tighter on the top, the, the front of the foot, uh, where it doubles up more so than you know over the top here. So I probably prefer to have two dials, even though that would look clunkier, or maybe just double up the laces so you're getting more tightness over the top. That's just a personal preference thing. So Northwave is positioning its Rockster as the racy shoe, and this is the gravel, enduro, bikepacking, 
uh, don't look like a total dweeb kind of shoe. I gotta say they're pretty comfy and they're not nearly as heavy or chunky as they look. For my go-to, I'll probably stick with the more racier version just cause that's my happy place. But I can see for a lot of folks, this would be a much more visually appealing shoe and it's quite comfortable to walk in. Weebly Wobbly Saddles. New to me, but not new to the world. SQ Labs is a German-based company that's been around for more than 20 years with ergonomics-based performance products. They make bits for all the contact points, the saddle, handlebars, uh, handlebar tape, shoe inserts. They're even making bib shorts. The saddles uh, come in a wide variety of widths in one centimeter increments. Most saddle companies will make either a width, sometimes two, maybe even three, but uh, five widths is a novelty. A novelty to me was sitting on pins and needles to poke holes to gather the shape of my rear end for the saddle fitting. So your pelvis will uh, perforate the paper yep. and so we can see um, the distance between the seat belts. Perfect. And the foot up on the on the step. Okay. Um, the back like this, yeah. and then use your hands to pull. Uh, perfect. Sounds okay. already good. Yeah, it sounds good. Okay. So <laughs> you can hear it. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can stand up. It worked. <laughs> Put it in the frame and take a picture. Again, new to me, not new to the world. You're probably familiar with. Uh, assometers, as they are lovingly called, from the likes of you know Specialized or Trek slash Bond Tracker, to measure your saddle width by your sit bones. Because, again, as you probably know, there are no hard and fast rules for what a person's sit bone width is based on the size of their body. So you can be a person with very wide hips, very narrow sit bones, or vice versa. So the SQ Lab protocol consists of putting a sheet of paper on a bed of pins, sitting on said pins, uh, and then taking a scan of the holes in said piece of paper, uh, which digitizes it and measures it. So I was deemed to fit on a 14 mil saddle, which is you know kind of in line with like a 143 specialized power saddle, which is my go-to. Beyond width, there's a Another couple of novel things about this. One is the uh, two-step or the double wave design. The front is slightly lower, take the pressure off the soft tissue, and then the rear kind of curves up for a bit of uh, leverage while pedaling, particularly while climbing. So that you know anchors you uh, a bit on the saddle. Often with a triangular saddle, just scooting fore and aft will sort of get you in the right place for width, right? But with this design where it curves up in the back, it's pretty important that the uh, curvature matches your body. Looks kind of funky. I was skeptical. It's pretty comfortable, I gotta say. Uh, and the saddle sort of disappears under you after riding, which is what you want with a saddle, right? It's like good bib shorts. You don't wanna be thinking about the things while you're riding. You wanna be just enjoying the ride. So the top shape uh, again just over the course of you know four hours of riding or so I haven't spent days much less months or years on this thing but initial impressions quite positive on the shape the perhaps most novel thing is the the undercarriage of where you put your undercarriage which is an elastomer suspended elastomer damped uh, bridge of sorts so that there's flex as you pedal laterally. It's not that dramatic when you're pedaling. I mean, if you exaggerate your pedaling, you can certainly get it to move that much. But just normal pedaling, there's just a, a small amount of movement. There's also a bit of wiggle here because I've got this reverb dropper post, so kind of hard to tease out which bit of movement is coming from what. But pedaling, the saddle moves slightly underneath you. The philosophy for SQ Labs is that the human body was not created for bicycling. It was created for walking and running and such. And having movement is part of how the human body moves. So that's the, the philosophy behind having a little wiggle in the saddle. 
as with the shape of the thing, I found having a bit of movement to be pretty comfortable. You know, I'd, I'm eager to test this out and taking this home and we'll certainly do a long-term test and report back, but initial impressions, things pretty comfortable. Sorry about the tractor noise. I'm in an olive grove and farmer's gonna farm. God bless him. So the YT Scepter. I will post a link to my original review in video form and in bike radar words and photo form in the description below. And you can also click the link up there to check out my initial thoughts on riding the bike after a few days in Southern California, including on the rough and tumble Catalina Island. Riding it here has been a treat. And again, as I said at the top of the video, my initial take on the bike was it's kind of funky looking, right? You know, you've got this weird, you know, what looks to me like faux arrow shaping. There's no aerodynamic uh, thought behind it. It's just a style design. These little baby fenders, a, you know, baby cross country 40 mil fork and a dropper post. It's a funky mix of things. Tires are, 42 mil, certainly not like the beefiest, biggest things out there, but it all adds up to a, a pretty fun bike, you know, sort of like a, what a kid's bike used to be or what bikes were to us as kids and that it's just a fun thing you can take wherever you want to ride. So I've been enjoying, you know, riding it here on gravel roads, oh, riding some of these downhill trails, you know, not like World Cup downhill trails, but they are one way downhill only trails. like you know, dropping about a thousand feet in two miles or so, and certainly not the type of trail <laughs> you could ride up. You know, like a few times when I was trying to go back and, and get some GoPro footage, I attempted in the 40, 44 to ride up this and quickly came off and put these walkable shoes to use in huffing up the trail. So the point is steep downhill trails, on this thing, very much appreciated having a dropper post because I spent the entire time well uh, behind the back of the saddle. Don't go over the bars. <sighs> Pretty sure you could cook some steaks on my rotors right now. Thick ones, well done. Just heavy on the brakes coming down that steep stuff. And very grateful to have a dropper post that I was all the way back as far as I could get challenging for a dainty old roadie like me. With some of these gravel bikes that push the envelope towards mountain bike territory, they often beg the question, why not just get a mountain bike, brah? And if you were riding just mountain bike trails, that would fully make sense. I do, however, see the benefit in having a bike you can ride in all the different places. You know? And while, of course, you can ride a mountain bike on the road, hauling heavy tires and a full suspension bike on pavement, you can just feel the energy being sapped out of you. So this is not an ideal bike for any one of those scenarios. It's not a road bike, it's not a mountain bike, uh, but it's a fun bike to ride on a bunch of different spots. I think the 42 mil tires are about as big as I'd like to go for tires. You know, coming down trails, of course, you would benefit from a bigger tire, uh, lower pressure, uh, but on the pavement, you know, riding 50 mil tires to me feels pretty sluggish and slow. So 42, you know, while YT certainly has a lot of knowledge from uh, mountain bike design, aired on the side of a, a livelier feel. One gripe I have with the bike is the BB sits really high. It's like a 62 mil drop which is a noticeable difference from something like, you know, the Giant Revolt that I was just riding last week, which is more like 80. Uh, and so I would often have the dropper down when I was going to dab uh, as I'm like awkwardly stumbling my way through tighter spots because with the post fully up, you can barely get, you know, your tippy toe down. So I'm not sure why the bike sits that high. I like having a, a lower stance on a gravel bike. The front end is, is slack, it's 69 and change, so certainly on the, on the slacker end of things. Back end, 425, not super tight, but still pretty lively feeling. And it's fun to ride on the road. You're not gonna mistake it for a road bike. Uh, it's a super long reach. 
this size large has you know, 59 plus centimeter top tube. All the bikes come with a stubby 70 mil stem and the seat tube is pretty aggressively forward, which for me um, uh, feels a little bit Mary Poppins like for an upright position compared to a more road style gravel. Benefit to this design is twofold. One, it, it works well when the trail is steep in either direction. Um, one thing I appreciated was the steep climbing. You know, having your weight further forward, you don't have to slide forward on the saddle uh, the way you would on a, on a more relaxed seat tube bike. Would I have this bike as my one and only to have and to hold? No, I would not. I like uh, a more road feeling gravel bike. However, the thing is fun to ride. Make no mistake, the thing is fun to ride and the price is decent. You know, you're looking at $4,500 for a SRAM Force equipped model. Uh, and then there's also the, the cheaper Core 3 model with SRAM Rival. That puts it even under Canyon as far as a consumer direct pricing. So great price, fun bike, funky look, but worth checking out. If you get a chance to demo one of these things, I'd recommend it. It's, it's a fun ride. Okay, I gotta get out of here. The tractor's closing in on me and I've got a few more meetings I've gotta get to here at the Bike Connection in Tuscany. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you subscribing. I highly recommend you come here to ride if at all possible, but whether you are riding in Italy, or anywhere else around the world, please enjoy the ride.